The views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Hello and welcome to Art Time with Bronx Arts Factory. My name is Nelly Escalante, also known as Nelarte on Instagram, and I'm excited to be here today partnering with BronxNet to bring you this episode today. Today you'll get to know a little bit about me and how I became an artist, and you'll also learn how to do this amazing abstract design on a t-shirt with a little bit of reconstruction, so I hope you join me on this art journey. I've always been engulfed in art. Uh, as a kid, I used to you know, draw fashion ladies. I love fashion and I love drawing and painting. I come from a family of artists. My um, father was an actor and my mother you know, made clothes in the house. My sister uh, paints and sings and my little sister is a photographer. So it was, it, it was always all around me. Um, I became really excited when I uh, got accepted into LaGuardia because it allowed me to really explore art materials, um, have teachers to teach me how to use these materials and it was a great way to just also dabble in different kind of media. Um, oil paint and screen printing and um, collage. So um, that's pretty much how, how I, I got my start as an artist. So the amazing thing about LaGuardia is that at the end of uh, our senior year, we are supposed to take an art history course. And that really um, changed the course of my art career. Although I was an artist, um, I really fell in love with art history. And that led me to museum education and art education. Um, which is my, pretty much my second love, or I can say they're neck and neck, the making art and talking about art um, just fuel my life. It's hard to pinpoint exactly when I decided to be an artist. I, art has always been around me. I, I love art. I, like I said before, I love painting and drawing and, and especially like fashion stuff, but it really was, um, until my son got diagnosed with autism and I had to stay at home with him for I stayed at home for him for seven years and that made me realize what is going to um, help me through this time and it became art and I opened up an Etsy shop I drew on things that I loved like screen printing and sewing I used to see my mom sewing um, dresses for us all the time and so I went back to that and I started my own shop uh, reconstructing clothing and printing um, badass people on them um, that really inspired me and I needed that as a mother going through a tough time. Um, that's very, uh, it, it's, it's a personal story and it's kind of indirectly related to the Bronx. Uh, my mother came here from Puerto Rico um, in the 60s and she immediately started working in a garment factory and I was always around the garment factory I would go to the the factory after school I would have to wait around and wait till she was finished with her shift um, for us to make our way back home and so it was during this time in the 50s and 60s that a lot of Latinas uh, immigrants um, came and were able to find work in the Bronx, um, particularly because a lot of these factories were moving from Manhattan to the outer boroughs, Queens, the Bronx, and, um, and Brooklyn too. So my work you know, in sewing is kind of indirectly related to the Bronx because of that history, and, and I became part of that wider history, but also that history with my mom sewing. And I also uh, print uh, people that are uh, Latinx and African American, and that's the people that make up the Bronx, right? So pretty much a personal and story and indirect way of, of um, making my way to, to the Bronx with my art. 
So I do a lot of reconstructed clothing. I, I consider myself a refashionista. Um, I enjoy changing things around. Um, I remember when people would bring me t-shirts from Puerto Rico and uh, they were gigantic. They were like with a rooster and a little coqui saying Puerto Rico me encanta. And I just wanted, you know, like kick butt people on my, you know, that I, on, on my t-shirts. And I wanted t-shirts that fit. So I just decided to get t-shirts, start reconstructing them to my size, and printing these um, amazing heroes, Shiro's, Pedro Albizu Campos, Frida Kahlo. Um, I'm a proud Boricua and a proud Latina, so I, I needed these people to inspire me. And I also enjoy fashionable clothes, so that's pretty much it. <laughs> Basically, it's because we need to see ourselves. Um, when we see artists of color, creatives of color, um, that speaks volume to the next generation. When I go to the Met and I go to the 18th century um, you know, European wing, and I see Juan de Pareja, uh, a, a black um, face, a black artist in the midst of white faces, that, that's powerful. We need to see ourselves. And, and also because it's great for our emotional well-being, our, our um, mental stability. I work for an amazing organization called Arts and Minds, and I see this all the time. It's for people that have dementia and their caregivers, and they're people who, who through art, are able to um, um, just express their fears, express their anxiety, but also express their joy. Um, and you know, my my boss says in the create in the creative space we're less segmented. It's also in the creative creative space in my art class in seventh grade where I told my my art teacher that uh, you know a huge family issue that I was having. So there's something about exploring materials, being engaged in art that just breaks boundaries. You you're able to let your 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 boundary down, your guard down, and you're open and you become more vulnerable, and so that's why we need the arts in our lives. Well, I think wearable art is always going to be my first love, and I'll always continue doing it, but I, I'm very much interested in exploring the elements of sewing, um, zippers and sewing patterns and thread, but in a 2D way and maybe doing abstract collages with these elements in some way. Um, I've been started to make a series like this and I want to continue exploring that. And where I find myself now in my life, art is very much about community. I I'd love to collaborate more, especially um, with caregivers. Um, I'm a special needs mom, so I'd love to give workshops to maybe special needs moms. Um, and I, art and faith are very important to me. So I had a, an amazing experience two years ago working with Abounding Grace, which is a church in the Lower East Side, and I was the artist in residence there. And I'd love to do more of that. I also did a workshop at my church, Fordham Manor. And so I'd love to um, combine those two, art and faith um, and community, and, and do workshops and it's very much about community for me now. Welcome back, and now we are going to show you how to do this amazing t-shirt abstract design with a little message and a little reconstruction. So what you'll need is a t-shirt. Um, you'll also need some fabric paint. These are tulip fabric paints. You'll need deli paper or wax paper. You'll also need a potato masher. Um, uh, this is a, a kind of like a cookie stamp that I got at the 99 cent store. A carrot or any kind of potato that might, I mean, a vegetable that might make a, a good stamp. A rolling pin, if you don't have a rolling pin, you can definitely use the aluminum foil um, roll. It works just as well. And some fabric markers or Sharpies. Sharpies will work just as well. So the first step is to choose your colors. Um, keep in mind the color of t-shirt that you have. 
And so you want to use colors that are going to stand out. Um, you may want to use colors that will blend in as well. So this is all about experimentation. Nothing's going to happen if you mess up. Actually, it might be a happy, a happy accident, like Bob Ross says. Um, so I'm going to choose uh, white, yellow, orange, and blue. And I'm going to start off by basically just putting a little blob there that might might be a little too much but that's okay so it's, it's it's it'll it'll still work I'm going to take the white and so these might come out a little bit you know quicker so just be mindful and I'll do a blue right around here so now if if you do a blob you're gonna get a different effect as if when if you do something like this, and you'll see when I show you what what, what we what it will come out like. And I'll do an orange. Um, let's see, maybe just right here. Oh, that one came out pretty fast, but it's no problem. So what you're going to do, I learned this technique from an artist named Jane Davies. She does it on on flat paper, but I was like, what would that look like if I put it on fabric? So as, as you notice, I have binder clips. That's another thing you'll need. Um, you don't really need it, but it just helps to stabilize the t-shirt. The so I'm going to put the wax paper or the deli paper, however you might want to call it, over. And we're basically going to roll it out. So you can use a rolling pin. This works just as well. I'm going to use this because everybody has aluminum foil and an aluminum foil roll. Um, around the house so so what I'm gonna do at this point because I'm noticing that the binder clips are not allowing me to press hard so I'm gonna take them off at this point and then I'm just gonna roll I'm gonna roll the paint and you know you'll see that it's creating these like larger blobs and then you can see where you want to put more paint. If you want to then change the orientation of the deli paper, I love it. It's like the element of surprise. And there's a little bit of, like a, 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 accumulation, a accumulation of paint there. So I want to really watch that. So you can change the orientation of the paper and see what that does to the design. This is about fun, experimentation, um, you ne you never know what you're gonna get, so just roll with it. I love making art and things like this that don't take a lot of planning after a hard day where I don't have to like, you know, draw or everything has to be in the right place. This is just very, it's, it's playful and it's one of the reasons I love, um, I love this technique. Let's see what that looks like. All right, not much different. If you want to add much, it, well, it did have kind of like some of the um, the leftover paint. You added a little bit of texture there. I want to fill up this space here, so I think I'm going to add a little bit more white. And keep in mind that you're going to want to write on this. So um, think about where you might want to write, where it's going to show up. So I'm thinking I might want to write something on this yellow. So um, I'm going to put a little bit of maybe just a couple of dots here. This will kind of give it some kind of rhythm and movement to see the white all around and maybe a little yellow here. I want might want to cover that spot there. That spot's bothering me. And then maybe a couple of more dots there. Let's see what that what's let's, let's see what's going to happen. So, I'm going to put the same paper cuz you might get some of the traces of the paint. So it might, uh, again, add, add a fun design to it. And another layer of texture and color. So again, I'm just rolling, being very mindful. Is that dry paint? That is dry paint, so I keep, I'm okay there. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, I like it. It's fun. I'm gonna turn it around and see what we get here on this side. I already put some paint on my rolling pin, which is totally fine. Okay. Put 
Oh, that's kind of fun. I'm going to hold it up and show you. It's kind of fun, right? I kind of like it. <laughs> So I think I might just want to add one more little blue. I'm seeing the blue is getting a little lost and that this will be um, the end for the, for this process, for this first step. I'd like to put a little more blue there and maybe a little more blue here. Maybe a little bit something there. And you know, you're going to see as this as the, the composition evolves, you'll see where you need more color. Um, what you might like to do with it. And so, you know, it is kind of this element of surprise, but you do have, you can make some decisions as well. So I'm just gonna roll over that and see what happens. And I love just abstract art because it's, it's really what I think is just talking about the, the pure elements of art. It's, it's color, it's texture, it's line. It's not representational unless you see something in it. Um, and I, don't, I, I feel that that gives you a little bit more freedom. You don't have to like wonder what something's gonna look like. It just looks like, like art. You're just using the elements of art. And so I think I'm gonna leave it like that. This is not, this is not the final project, product, it's just the, the first step. So we'll complete the first step. So this is the second step. So that after your design dries, and I just want to interject, you do need a cardboard in between the t-shirt because if you don't use a cardboard, it'll just kind of seep right through and you'll have the same design in the back. If that's what you're going for, then go for it. But um, <laughs> um, most likely you might not be. So remember to put a cardboard in between. This is, you know, this is something I got from, I think a box or the ending of a, a watercolor um, pad. So it completely has dried. So this is the next step. Um, this is my favorite because you get to add all this texture. And I love printmaking. Um, it's where uh, I drew, draw a lot of my inspiration from my own work. And so I'm just gonna play with maybe the same colors that I started with. Let's do, um, let's do white. Since it's a blue shirt, it'll stand out. So we're here, we're not applying on the t-shirt. We're using the same deli paper or wax paper, however you wanna call it. And we're putting it there. And I think I'm going to do, well, let's just start with that. We got our potato masher, everyday object. They, there, it's another kind of potato masher that has these, um, that squares, this one's a circle, but there's also squares and all kinds of other um, designs on, on a potato masher. My husband makes fun of me because I take out the potato masher, I take out the, the carrot and all these other like kitchen utensils and he's like, are you gonna cook something? And I'm like, no, I'm cooking art. <laughs> so he's actually an amazing cook. So me, not so much. This is why I, I, I make art with, with cooking utensils. <laughs> so let's see where it goes. Let's see, I'm going to just, you wanna make sure that it's not too, um, wet because it'll probably create like a blob um, which might be okay too again there's happy accidents here so let's see what that looks like okay it's a little a little um, I wanted to get more texture here but this looks nice here but I'm just gonna keep going it looks like I'm gonna need more paint this is tulip fabric paint it's the cheapest fabric paint there's also like very expensive fabric paint Jacquard um, is a very expensive fabric paint, um, but you don't need that here. You can, tulip is just as fine. And so I'm just gonna go around. I love texture. I'm just gonna do this. Okay. I'm gonna go on top of it. I'm gonna also move these paper, these binder clips so I can get like, more space. And you can just go anywhere with this. Let's switch it up a bit and let's go to, I found these in the 99 cent store. They're, they're supposed to be like for, for cookies and cakes. You make these designs on cookies and cakes, amazing. You see the thread here? Like it's all like cooking materials. <laughs> um, you can continue on with the same paint. Look at that pretty, that it's like a snowflake. I'm gonna use a darker color so that can come out. 
Um, well, maybe a yellow would be nice because again, we're using a blue t-shirt, so we want to make sure that our colors will will come out. Okay. Um, let's try this one. Let's move that masher out of the way. And this is my very like favorite part. I just love seeing what will happen. So here we go. Look at that. Look at that beautiful. It's like a snowflake. This literally costs 99 cents. It's a set of four. They all have different designs. It's the same kind of snowflake, but still kind of design. It's, it's a different design of a snowflake. And it's so much fun. If you want, you can also take the sleeves out and keep going. Extend that design to the neck, to the sleeves. Go to town. This is your t-shirt, you know. I see a lot of these graphic t-shirts and they're great, but I'm like, you know what, I can do that. And it'll be personalized and with my own message. And so it's just lots of fun. Let's try the carrot. I discovered painting with carrot when I was, uh, had this gig in a preschool and they said, you know, we wanna do printmaking. And I was looking like, oh, what can I do with the preschoolers that they would love? And I found um, this technique and it's, it works. <laughs> I'm not gonna do orange because the carrot's orange. So let's not do that. <laughs> not that it matters. Um, well, I already put yellow. Let's see what it, what it looks like. It's basically circles. Let's do this in blue. So I'm just going to put a little bit there. And, you know, we can personalize our own clothing. This might turn to green because I put it on the yellow, but I think the yellow was, was dry. And so you want to just do that so that it doesn't come out like a big blob. Let's do it again. Yeah, it's kind of like circles. You can do this with potatoes, you could do it with uh, peppers. There really is a theme here. <laughs> we're, we're cooking art, that's what it is. <laughs> Putting it on here, and so... You can just keep going and going and going. I mean, you can go down, you know, to the bottom of the t-shirt, to the sleeves. Just have fun and then I'll show you the next step. All right, so now you have your abstract design. You added some texture with the potato masher and some of these uh, cookie cutters that I'm, uh, cookie um, uh, design things that I mentioned. I'm not even sure how, what, what they're called, but you can get them in the 99 cent store in the baking aisle. And um, we put a little bit of the carrot. And so you have like a nice, layer where you can now put some lettering and this is where you're going to show up your message what you're about what i love about wearable art is that you become the art and you it's your message and it expresses what you think what you feel and who you are so i love these tea juice markers um they are like literally very juicy like you, there's like you know liquid inside they they tend to you have to be really careful because I'm gonna use a, a paper plate. Um, I would just test it before, just to make sure, you see how that might come out really thick. So if you wanna do lettering, just uh, applying pressure, like just right. And you're gonna get good at this, as the, the more you do it, you'll realize you know, how to make nice straight lines without making them too blobby. So um, I think I'm, I want to put love on there and I choose, chose blue. We have some blue dots here that I made. And I thought, I see like this space here needs some lettering. So I'm going to take the binder clips out of the way. I'm going to put my, my uh, tea juice marker down. Um, you do need the binder clips. You like, don't take them out fully. I'm just taking these things out. And what I'm going to do is just stretch the fabric a little more, more taut. That will make the lettering um, come out even uh, just much easier. 
that. So I'm going to do that. I want to put maybe like love right here in this. I feel like this is begging for lettering. So this is the final step where you get to reconstruct your t-shirt. I'm just going to do something really simple like I do here. Um, it's amazing what a little snip snip here, a little snip snip there will do for a t-shirt. Um, this looks totally different, not cut, than when it was cut. It totally transformed it. So I'm going to show you just what I do. It's just, um, you find the center. And so I'm thinking the center is right here. You want like maybe an inch or, you know, three quarters of an inch. And you cut really close to the neck. So I'm just going to go in. I go, um, I look at the seam. You know what, I can open this up a little bit. And my seam is here. I'll probably go up to here maybe two inches from where the seam starts, the shoulder seam. And then I open it up a little wide. Now, this is gonna stretch, so you'll be amazed. Like, I have ruined many a t-shirt. Well, I'm not gonna say ruined, I'll say happy accident. Um, but <laughs> uh, when I cut too deep or too much, like, I might, it might look like it's just a little slit, but when you put it on, because it stretches, it's, it's a large slit, so this, you know, is really just a tiny little slit. So I'm just going in there. Maybe not a slit, maybe an opening. And I'm just going in there. This is how much I'm taking off. Boom. And that's it. This is when you wear it, it's going to open up. So it's going to look, um, it's going to look bigger. It doesn't look big here. And so I'm going to go to the next side i'm going to do the same thing locate my center and then maybe give it like i guess an inch that looks like an inch i'm going to go up the the collar pretty close to the collar i'm looking at my seam yep i'm going to end there it's like two little smiley faces or two little eyes there and i'm just going to simply again very little not a lot because this is going to open up when you wear it and then you got it's kind of a cute reconstructed t-shirt i'm going to open it up so you can see what it looks like and you can keep adding more texture more color this is going to dry and then you'll continue adding more and more and so it's hard to see the slits because the the, the background is white but if you put it on a mannequin or you put it on yourself you'll definitely see and this is your own design. You know, we go to museums, and don't get me wrong, I am a museum educator and I love museums, um, but we go to museums to look at artwork. You know, we are, you know, a work of art within ourselves. We're masterpieces. So why not wear a wearable art piece and with your message, with your stamp of creativity, and enjoy yourself. Like, again, this is something you can do with your family. Um, you can have a t-shirt party, just have, you know, fabric paint and potatoes and carrots and mashers and all sorts of things and just have some fun create creating with your family. So thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for joining us for today's episode of Art Time with BX Arts Factory. Catch us next time at BronxNet TV.